first thing I've done is unbox this DJM suspension box. Basically what this kit entails is your U-bolt, your actual kit that's going to take place of what you're going to have on your flip kit. So basically on a flip kit, you're going to take the leaf springs which are sitting on top. You're going to take those leaf springs and you're going to move them to the bottom of the axle. And that is what these two plates here make up for. Also, you're going to have your plates here that are going to have your U-bolts pass through. You've got a, obviously a hardware kit, nuts. So let's get right into the truck. All right, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is taking off these factory option air shocks that they put on. What I'm going to do on that is just remove this top bolt and lower bolt. We will not be using these because we have a drop shock coming in to replace all this. Alrighty, so the next thing we're going to be doing is jacking up on the rear end and getting it off these wheel dollies just so we can have the frame away from the axle because like I said earlier, we are going to be taking this axle and putting it underneath these leaf springs. Alrighty, now that we've got the weight of the axle down on its own, we are going to go ahead and remove the factory U-bolts here. And in doing that, I'm going to go ahead and come in here with the slitting disc and just get this thing as close to our actual our factory nut and everything. That way we don't have all this thread. It's kind of rusty and nasty. So if you've got a kit like we do with brand new U-bolts, I highly recommend if you've got the means, just go ahead, get a slitting disc in here and just cut the heads, or the, I guess actually the bolts off these. That way the nut doesn't have to travel up as much. So we ran into our first dilemma in this kit. Dad's truck was apparently used and abused pretty good. These leaf springs, I don't know how much experience you have with leaf springs, but they're not supposed to be two-piece. The two middle leaves of the spring pack just came out and they're broke in the middle. There is a bolt that goes right through the center of these leaf springs. And on Dad's truck, unfortunately, they are broke. So what we'll probably do is just remove the two center leads, run our overload, which is our main bottom one here, be just our main link, our main leaf here, and it'll be that and our overload, and that's going to be making up our leaf springs. So alrighty, now that we've got the leaf situation figured out and it is released from our axle. We're gonna move on to taking the actual leaf springs themselves loose from the chassis. That way, whenever we wanna get our rear end jack back up, we can ensure that our leafs and all that good stuff are gonna be underneath of the axle. Alrighty, so now that the hard part's over, everything is off the truck. Basically, getting these old leaf springs off this 72 was pretty painful. We had to end up coming in and actually cutting some bolts out of these old shackles, which I did order some new shackles. So the next step is going to be, I'm going to come in here and clean this rear end up just a little bit where these mounting pads are going to go. And I'm going to paint those just so whenever we come back and we do go ahead and paint everything on the truck, the pads and everything are going to be painted in between where everything's going to sandwich together. That way the rust that's in here doesn't continue to I guess grow and spread. Alrighty, so now that I've got everything pretty much cleaned up to an extent, I came back and I hit it with an air nozzle just to blow all the loose off of it. Also, I blew the frame rails and stuff like that just so stuff wasn't gonna fall down into the paint after we do this. What I'm gonna do is just get a little bit of this mineral spirits on a rag, just wipe down any of the other debris that might have been left behind, just to try to get just a better paintable surface. Yeah. Alrighty, I'm gonna hop to the other side, do the exact same thing, and then we'll be ready for some paint. Alrighty, so the paint that I'm gonna be using on my rear end here is gonna be an Eastwood Extreme Chassis Black. I used it on my 64 C10, and if you haven't checked that truck out, I'll leave a link in the description. You can check that full build out. 
This Extreme Chassis Black by Eastwood is pretty good stuff. It seemed to held up really good. I painted that frame over a year ago, so I highly recommend this stuff. Not sponsored by any means, so go check it out. It's kind of expensive, but the coverage from this stuff is pretty sweet. We'll be getting into painting this whole frame on this truck, so if you're not already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below, and uh, you can tune in next week and see what we got going on. But enough of that rambling. Let's get into painting this thing. Alrighty, so we're gonna get over here to the other side just like everything else and do the exact same thing. Alrighty, so as you can see here, this is gonna be how this mounts up. I went ahead and got this driver's side on. Uh, recommendations by the instructions say to put your leaf springs on first, but I do not currently have everything I need as I'm gonna probably get new bolting. And we're waiting on shackles still, so I'm gonna run you through on the other side how to bolt this up. Alrighty, so we've got all of our pieces and parts here. This little tab there that's sticking up in this plate is gonna go straight down in here. And it's gonna be held in place. The thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you get this plate here, which it says in your instruction manual. You want your hole to be facing your cab. That way, everything is gonna be gonna stay centered in your wheel well whenever your wheels come up with this drop. Next thing we're gonna do, take this, making sure that's in the front, slide it up underneath here and we're going to drop our bolts in also these bolts are different lengths you can see this one is a three and a half inch long bolt and this one is a four per the instructions it says the three and a half needs to go in the front so that's what we're going to do now also a little thing that i want to note this is probably factory brake lines on this truck and I did have to manipulate the driver's side just a little bit. I had to push that in because it was interfering with where that bolt was going to go down through there. Keep that in mind. You may have to do that, but especially if somebody's ran brake lines or you've ran brake lines, just keep in mind that you might have to manipulate them a little bit. And on these older trucks, just be careful because that's the quickest way to get a pop line or something like that. But if they're that brittle, you probably need to replace them anyway. Alrighty, so the next thing that's left to do is tighten those two uh, bolts down, but I'm not going to tighten it all the way down yet because I do want to make sure it's all squared up and I have a little bit of movement. So whenever we install these leaf springs, I'll be sure that these things are going to be locked in where they need to go. And it's just nice to kind of keep everything loose until you almost get this thing back on the ground. That way everything can kind of feel where it needs to be. Alrighty, so it is the next day and we've got our new shackles here. I guess somehow I ended up ordering shackles for like a newer model Silverado, which all the diameter on it, I looked at the old ones, is pretty much the same except for the width of this metal bung right here. I've got the driver's side installed and what I did was basically just took a slit and disc right here on this little bushing portion the steel on the inside of the rubber here and i just cut that off right where it sticks out hopefully you see that there's a little lip that sticks out side of that bushing so what i did was just came in with my slitting disc knocked that off and they slid right in so if you ever need any of these these silverado bushings will work apparently so Next step is going to be we're going to come in here and get our bolt out of here, which you might want to do that before you put this in apparently. Like I was saying, the next thing we're going to do is remove this bolt. And in doing that, it's going to allow us to get our leaf spring up here and bolt it into position. All right, now that I've got that done, I'm gonna skip over to the other side, do that, and then I'll catch back up with you here in a second and we'll get these U-bolts and all that installed. All right, so the next line of business is gonna be getting the rear end moved upward. That way we can get the leaf springs up 
and resting in their front perches. You want to kind of be careful on this part because there's nothing really holding that rear end or the drive shaft, I guess I should say, into the transmission. So if you do any kind of a motion where you're pulling that thing back at all, you can slide your yoke out of your transmission and it'll pretty much make you want to do some cussing and stuff. So I'll probably do a perfect demonstration on exactly that because it has happened to me in the past. Just if you can, just try to keep some forward pressure on this jack when doing this. So you can see right here, the pinion is pointing straight down, which is not what you want. So what I'm gonna have to do is go down and get a different bite on the rear end. That way it doesn't do exactly like I was saying and walk out of that transmission. Alrighty, so I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. Drive shaft is now starting to lift with the truck, which is what you want. You don't want to continue just jacking that pinion angle until that thing finally decides it wants to slip out of there. So what I ended up doing was wedging the front part of the jack. So your rear end is basically at a taper from the lowest point. So I just put a piece in there to kind of counteract all that. So let's get this thing back on up. Alrighty, so now that the rear end is jacked up enough, you can see we've got plenty of leeway here to get the leaves up now that the rear end's out of our way. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the front perch mounted. That way we can lay the axle back down. It can kind of find its home and then we can start working on getting our u bolts on. Before I lower this down, I do want to go ahead and show you this little bolt or nut head here. That hole that I was telling you about up here is going to be what you're going to align. So you're going to match those two holes up and make sure that it goes over top of this nut here on either side. And that's going to center your axle where it needs to be. So Our last step is going to be getting the U-bolt and the lower plate on. So. Just like the other plates and stuff we've been putting on, this is gonna be directional. You're gonna want this towards the front of your cab, the hole that is, and then you're just gonna put that up through the bottom and you're gonna find your stud down here and you're gonna fit that right in this hole. So we'll go ahead and drop our U-bolts over and start getting our plate fit up through the bottom. Make sure to put your bolts and nuts where your head can knock them off. Then grab your first, grab your first nut, and we're gonna just put it on here so to hold that plate. Alrighty, with everything kind of snugged up, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the rear end up. That way we can get the jack stands out of our way, set this thing down, let everything settle, then we can go in for a final tighten. Alrighty, so I was able to get everything tightened down on the truck and the truck is sitting on the ground. All I did was went back and tightened all this up and then also our shackles and our front two bolt mountings here. So I'm going to step back here, you can get an idea. The front is still up on some wheel dollies and obviously it doesn't have anything done to it. So the truck is sitting way lower. We are definitely going to be having to utilize those notches because we are sitting directly basically directly there's probably an inch clearance underneath there right now so once we get those step notches in there that'll help all that clear so if you are going to do this doing the mono leaf with just the overload it definitely made this thing sag a lot more that uh, leaf spring it allowed it to kind of straighten out a lot more than if it did have that extra support in there of the broken leaves over there eventually we'll probably end up going back with some stock replacement springs on this truck just because this is a little bit lower than dad's probably going to want keep that in mind if you are putting this kit on it's probably not going to be quite this low 
Alright, so that's going to wrap up another one. Dad's truck's getting closer to being on the road. I appreciate you guys watching. If you don't care and you enjoyed this content, go ahead and feel free to leave a like down below and maybe even a comment because it helps me out. But until the next one, I'll see y'all.